Oh no. That's the wrong screen. Look at that. Recursion. It's my favorite. I can fix it. There we go. Oh yeah, this... This new one doesn't have it. On my... On my other... Like when I do this without starting the stream, it shows your... your the animation from the from the gif and I'm a little upset that it's not animated right now me too I that's what I want it's it's upsetting but it's it's all right uh anyways let me let me turn on my youtube voice for a second i haven't practiced but i want to can you talk real quick so I can see where your audio is going? Uh, it's it's not it's not going anywhere. Try that. Also, I'm way more majestic in real life than that picture depicts me to be. Yeah. I need to turn your volume down a little bit. That was loud as f. Try again. Does that sound any better? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not you as a volume slider that I have on my end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Majestic? I don't know if that's the right word. I mean, you did hurt yourself moving furniture, I think. Yes, and I had another friend that hurt himself moving furniture in the exact same way. Ironically, it was today. That sucks. Yeah. Moving heavy things that are awkwardly big, uh, yeah, can uh, mess you up. Every time. All right, let's see if I can get one more little, no, nope, wrong slider. I need more volume in my headphones so I can hear you, but I have to turn everything down so it doesn't peak on the stream. That's super fun. Also, I'm at the mercy of OBS if it picks up any chat, so I don't know if you want to <clears throat> type something in there and see if it'll pop up on my end, because I, I really have no idea if I if it's going to work. Uh, but all right, let me, let me just record something real quick for oh yeah, Majestic. <laughs> Um, ah, screw it. I don't want to do an intro. I can always record one later. Yeah, let's just get right into it, man. That's what I usually do to you, so now it's your turn. It's my turn to get into it? It's your turn to stop all sense of uh, co uh, conversation flow and just jump right in. Okay. Um... Wow, put me on the spot like that. I'm a little nervous now. Well, I was planning. I, to... I was Go planning ahead. on going through the character, so the cast selection, and kind of seeing how it looked. Because I pulled, you know, these were running on the pre-roll, but mm -hmm. you know, like we got live action Aang, and then you know, I thought they, I thought they did a good job. Like with the, especially with the outfits, I kind of wish I had taken more screenshots with their outfits and stuff. Their costume design to me was really good. Also, I was, um, we'll have to talk about that one later. But like, some of these are, some of these are a little different. Like Gyatso doesn't quite look the same. They, they did a pretty good job. Uh, the one I was most interested in was, uh, Sokka like Sokka has a very like long face and kind of weird like a lopsided facial expression a lot and when I watched episode one he made a face like this and I was like it hit me right in the nostalgia without you know I wasn't expecting that 
from a facial expression, but I loved it. Like whoever they, whoever this is, he's doing a great job. <laughs> I agree. I think, I think they did the best they could with a realistic expectation of casting somebody. Uh, the big thing that stuck out to me for the for this live action compared to the movie that they had was the movie Aang, which they called him Ong, I'm pretty sure. Jesus. Uh, which threw everybody off. Is His outfit was different. The arrow on his head was, was different. Had a bunch of markings, which it wasn't that way in the show. While it looked cool in essence, it wasn't really like a one for one of what you're really looking for. Like you look at the live action Aang from the movie and it just doesn't really feel like you're looking at the Aang that you know, that we all right. know. And I feel like with this live action, they really, they nailed that. And they even took what I liked from the movie, which was those designs in the arrow. And they, they made incorporated them. that it, into the, the animated Aang. So for me, I really liked how they took that approach. I think that they were pretty accurate with all their castings. My favorite personally was Zuko. I feel like his is the best kind of one for one with especially just an episode one with the way he carried himself, the characteristics of that character that he's trying to play, that angry kind of forsaken son. Um, I feel like that really came across uh, nicely in, in episode one. I feel like Sokka was a little... It, it took me a minute with Sokka. Uh, just watching episode one, I really didn't have a clear opinion on him yet. You know, I want to give it time, get through, you know, the whole season, see how I feel at the end. Um, but when it came to Aang, I liked that casting. Man, his eyebrow game is strong as hell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's... Intense. I mean, imagine imagine him, all the pressure that he must be under. He has to look young, act young, have very a very animated expression. Like, Aang in the cartoon is so expressive. And, you know, they're like, you have a chance to sink or swim the entire franchise based on your ability to animate your face. And Absolutely. I think he did a good job, personally. Yeah. Definitely. There's, I do feel like he plays. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. There, there's the eyebrows uh, for animated Aang, way up in the sky, and then we come back and uh, you know he's poking at Gyatso in this scene, but he does a pretty good job of getting them eyebrows up when he needs to. Yeah, they are they are on point. I think that the live action Aang. At least in episode one, I think he, while he's still trying, I mean, they're trying to focus on the, he's, he's still a child. He's not wanting to mature and take on the responsibility yet. I do feel like this Aang has gotten a little bit more serious, a little faster. Okay. Um, Cause you can kind of tell he sees that realization that he's got to take a more mature approach pretty early on. Whereas in the show, I think it took him a little bit longer to go through that. That was kind of more of a big arc in the show for him. Right. And I know that they've kind of talked about that leading up to the release of this show, that they want Aang to be a little bit more mature and focused on his maturity and his mission of becoming the Avatar and carrying that responsibility because they want to connect with a more mature audience. Now, is that the right approach? I don't know. Time, I think time will tell. Um, I'm not mad about it right now because I think they're still capturing the essence of Aang uh, in the right way. I mean, it's right. still there. Like when you watch the old movie, it just feels so out of place. When you watch this, you it's not one for one. And I don't think that they can do that realistically. You know, every scene for scene and line for line. Um, but I think overall they're capturing what we want to see. The clothes look correct. They're, you know... Oh, they're pronouncing the names right for the most part they're going you know scene by scene pretty correct it might not sound line for line uh like this show but they're hitting the highlights and i think that that's the important part and they should be praised for that i i fully agree man i 
when I started the episode, I was a little thrown off by the by the introductory scene with the Earthbender uh, running around the Fire Nation. I did enjoy the bending. We can talk about that later. Um, but that that kind of threw me off, and then and then the introductory scene with Aang, where he's kind of sitting up high and then floats his way down, that didn't really hit right um, with me either. But I couldn't figure out why. Uh, I think I, I think I got it figured out. Um, and then what really, what really, really got me was when he was stuck in the water, like the wave knocked over him and Appa and they landed in the water. And then he did the, he did the thing where he slipped into the avatar, the avatar state that transported me back to the cartoon immediately. And I was like, I got chills. I was, I was, uh, I was like, Oh, this this show has really good potential. And then, you know, like the next scene where, you know, of course it's going to be a lot of power use things that affected me when I was a kid, you know, like the scene where they, where Aang is released and you got the big vertical, the big vertical bar shoot up in the sky. Like that was good too. And, um, you know, like all those, all those scenes that they got really, really close just transported me seeing uh seeing Sokka's face his facial expressions and kind of toning down uh some of the things from the cartoon but like capturing the essence of the show was fantastic like I uh hearing Zuko get you know basically they transported him from like complete stubbornness to um like kind of like a sad naive naivete kind of thing it's it's like a subtle difference but i i thought it was really good like all the all those things were just fantastic the fire bending all the all the scenes that were from the cartoon uh turned into live action that they got pretty close were just fantastic i i agree i i liked how they started with that fight scene because <clears throat> i think that's that's the whole essence of putting this in live action is getting to get that visual, um, that real granular look of something realistic with the CGI in, involved with it. Um, and also, you know, it's just a little bit of a different approach, you know, compared to the show. Uh, like you said, I, I think we were off stream talking about it maybe before, but you were like, you know, you didn't, you weren't sure if, the, if we got that backstory in, in the animated series and and i don't think we did uh but i liked how they started that you know it, it definitely feels like it set a more mature approach uh it set a tone uh to start off and i and i like that mm -hmm. uh when it came to what was the the second point you were making oh the uh the one for one scenes like that i liked it a lot uh they had that intro i I think it might have been Katara's voice where she was kind of going along the lines where she was talking about the history of the Avatar and um, it was almost like the intro, but it was a little different. Right. That kind of, I was like, man, I really wish that they had just stuck with, you know, the, the real intro because that's what we all know. It just kind of echoes in us. And then, you know, as I was kind of dwelling on that fact, like five minutes later, the Grand Grand character she spits right. it out verbatim and i was like there we go that hit home for me even though it came from somebody else didn't matter they put it in there and that made me happy um and they've kind of had some of those little moments that you see i remember in the intro to the show with him like spinning on his little air ball and running into a wall i know that they put that in episode two which was great uh and then throwing that uh intro introduction that description of the history of the avatar and all the four elements those those kind of moments like that in this show just make me have really high hopes uh for i guess the run of this and and think that it has a lot of potential that's cool that they're um i mean it, it's it's to be expected right and i think the i think the show what they're doing the best is striking a balance between attempting to mimic the show one for one and adding their own touch and flair without going over the top. Like they, 
they are toning down some of Sokka's, um, you know, he's, he's accused, the cartoon Sokka is accused a lot of like being extremely like women can't do this, women can't do that. And they kind of framed him a little bit differently in this show, the live action of him more being uh, like kind of leaning into that leader role a little sooner. And so when he's, when he's telling Sokka, come on, you know, let, let's go. He's not saying it like you can't do it. He's saying we need to do it because that's, that's what we have to do because nobody else will. And, you know, I, yeah, that's the kind of touch and flair that I appreciate. They're not like, um, they're not washing out Sokka's character. They're reshaping it and making it a little more palatable. And I, you know, I'm okay with that. I, Sokka's, Sokka's a little over the top. Katara's a little over the top. Um, you know, Katara's everything's about her, basically her dead mom for all three seasons. And uh, Aang is over the top with his uh, childishness, even though he's a child. But, like, I think them toning down all of those exaggerated characteristics from the cartoon uh, do well in the in the live action because it it would be almost obnoxious to have it live action like over the top characteristics that they had to do in the cartoon i i thought this was good decisions all around um i think i don't i don't want to be too negative yet but i think the only miss from my my perspective was iroh yeah so so i have a couple points to add to a couple things you've talked about and then we can get into iro um, okay so one I, I agree with with you kind of talking about how they're trying to shape the characters in a little bit of a different light this time around and and like you said you're, you're okay with it and, and i think i am too um the kind of part of Sokka in in the beginning he's i mean quite frankly he's being a bit sexist about things uh, is is what I think they're trying to avoid. I think right. that is a big thing for his arc in the show because uh, Suki is the one that teaches him the error in his ways. And that's a thing that they kind of build, not build a relationship, but that's an aspect to their relationship right? and a growth for Sokka. And because they don't have that, we're going to miss that opportunity. And that's something that, you know, is a one for one from the animated season or series. And I can get why they're avoiding that. But for me, that's kind of something like with you and the will of time, you know, if you're just watching this for the first time, and you've never seen avatar animated series. It really doesn't matter. Cause you're still getting the essence of Sokka. Uh, but for the people that grew up watching it, you're like, ah, oh, he was a little different to start off. And you know, right. he gets into in season two, you know, he meets uh, Suki and, and, that's something that they kind of butt heads over and, and he grows in that aspect. Uh, second thing I know you brought up was whenever the show kind of starts and Aang is at the top of the, I think they're called like wind towers or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And he kind of floats down. I know that you said something kind of sat amiss with you right there. And I've, I've seen a lot of hate online uh, for that moment right there. For me, people are like, you know, they got him flying and he doesn't have his wind staff and that's not realistic or that's not, you know, accurate to the show. And I'm like, I don't think he's flying. I think he's gliding down. You know, he's not just shooting up off the ground and flying 50, 100 feet in the air. He's right. already up and he's kind of gliding his way down and using his bending to slow that descent and have fun with it. Uh, but I wouldn't call it flying. So I, I don't really see how they can hate on that i don't really see the validity there um i don't know what your opinion is but for me that's just kind of what i took was he's mainly gliding down and and just having fun with it with his bending i i think um i think if they had shown so here here's what they did they showed him on the tower and then they showed him jump up and then pan the camera over to where he was going. And so it gave the camera perspective of him flying upwards and then in a direction. And I feel like the scene would have been better if they had cut over like his shoulder where he was looking at 
to show that the next tower that he was going to is further down to create the like okay he's just doing a long jump and using his air bending to to land on it and i i feel like you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go so far as to try to critique uh the not the screenwriters but the the people that decide what the camera angle should be but to me it felt wrong because of that like because you couldn't see where he was going in advance you you get the impression that he's flying up and out when in reality he's basically just pulling a buzz lightyear and falling with style down to the next tower as he works his way down so that that's my opinion on it after thinking about it and after watching it a couple days ago it just felt wrong because the distance looked too far once they panned out but i think if they had shown like an upward angle like the like move the camera way up and cut down so that you could see from his perspective he's just jumping over and down some yeah that and that's fair i think i think definitely the the frame that they took can be a little misleading i yeah. i just feel for the argument's sake of people saying that that's not it's not in the capacity of Aang's powers to do that. I just feel like that's false because we've seen Aang, you know, with his hands just shoot himself up like 15 feet in the air. And I feel like that that, that was my perspective of watching that scene was just him shooting himself up. And then you can kind of see him almost like a jellyfish in water, just kind of use the air to pull him a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. In and in essence... I I think the if I were to go look in the go look in the comments, it would be that he went up and then changed direction, uh, is what it felt like, from the, like from thinking back to the to that scene, it felt like he went up and then changed direction, and, you know the the mechanics of of how his flying works with his glider, the glider was like a big part of his ability to stay in the air and change direction and move around it didn't it didn't feel right when i watched it like my initial reaction to it was negative so i mean that that's i think that's a majority of the people's complaints uh also he did uh he did it again when he was like trying to call appa i think he blew the whistle and then he like f basically launched himself like 20 30 feet in the air and it felt like it was too far like it's kind of silly to say, you know, a magical world where people can bend bend elements. It, it felt like too much, <laughs> but but that was that was the feeling that I got. It felt it felt out of place. Mm -hmm. Like he shouldn't be able to do that, but I couldn't put my finger on why. You know what yeah. I mean? I could see that. I, the, I would. Ju I just hate that. That's the that's the nail people try to use to to put in the coffin of this show. Is it's it's not worth people's time. I'm like, uh -huh. we're being like that nitpicky, you know, like I, I get the frustration. I, I can see what people mean. I just feel yeah. like it's a perspective thing. Yeah. And, hate, you know, it's haters going like to hate some series. Yeah. I don't feel like it's, it's uh, you know, they took a left turn in the show and, you know, they're just not staying true to the to the essence of the, the animated series. So I just wanted to address that. I felt like that was important because I see that that's a, a thing that's come up multiple times for the show. And, and I feel like it's a little unjust, unjustified, but oh, absolutely! I really am excited to get into your opinion of Uncle Iroh because for me, this was probably the biggest, I guess, fear I had was how how this character was going to be portrayed. Mm, me too, and I think my my fears were somewhat justified you know gyatsu is a, a very short-lived character doesn't last very long uh, but you know it was, it was important to to try to get him right and i think they did a decent job and then we hop over to iroh and i feel like i feel like the change that needs to be made you know of course they've already recorded you know the, they've already shot the whole first season so i don't know how far along you got i mean what what did you think overall of iroh did he do okay did he feel wrong yeah so i i'm i'm two episodes in i'm tr i'm trying my best not to just 
binge this thing and burn it right. in one week because I've been waiting years for this. I right. want I want to hit that that slow simmer. I also want to give myself time to digest what they're doing because um, I feel like when you when you binge through something, um, you don't give yourself enough time to quite digest each episode and see everything that they're trying to do. Right. Um, I I do through the first two episodes. I, I share your sentiment of something feeling a bit amiss with Uncle with Uncle Iroh. For me, I feel like personality wise, it's pretty mm-hmm. close. I'm not I'm not too sold on everything. Uh, it feels close. I, I see what they're trying to do there. A, a lot like in Aang's character, uh, where this time around, or even Sokka, you know, it's for the most part like 80%. They're they're pretty on point. The thing with Uncle Iroh for me is the voice and the delivery of his words. I feel like he's, I feel like Uncle Iroh is one of those characters that kind of that older, raspier, wise voice is so important to his character and the delivery of what he says. Mm -hmm. And the guy that they got to play him just doesn't quite have that. Like I think of somebody like Gandalf or a Dumbledore, you know, and that's kind of how I see Uncle Iroh in this. He's that old, wise character that's just following these young people through life and trying to guide them um, from a distance with, you know, wisdom. And right. that, it, and I, I feel like it's not just Uncle Iroh in this show that I feel that way about. I feel like the one negative for me, and I was trying to save this to the end, but I feel like it's you know kind of crucial to to add it to this point is i feel like the delivery of the dialogue is a little off in the show sometimes i feel like dialogue can can fall flat in the way that some of these characters express themselves right i want to separate uh prince zuko from that because i feel like for me he knocked his his part out of the park everybody else like katara uncle iroh ang sokka they their dialogue sometimes felt flat um but overall that does not make me feel negative about the show that's a small critique that i feel like i realize uh but i feel like that's what i'm missing with uncle iroh's character i i think that when you said delivery that's that's kind of the direction i was leading in as i was trying to think think and collect my thoughts is that cartoon cartoon Air, you know, Avatar Iroh is is he's kind of um, how do how do I say this? He's aloof, so he's he's not too concerned about anything really. He's he's almost constantly uh, talking about tea, but not because he's just talking about tea. He's trying to get people to slow down and think and talk and because he knows he knows what happens like he's got a a history of what it was like to to be aggressive and have a hot temper and a big a big part of his character throughout the animated series was that he was trying to get everybody to slow down and it kind of turned into like a like a meme where where let's you know let's have some tea but it was never like it was never um, over the top. It was never uh, flat, like you said. And this this version, the the live action version, it's almost like um, it's not said with enough concern. It's not said with enough um, emotion of I'm I'm a wise old man who's lived a hard life, and you know I'm just trying to let's let's just stop and think for a minute. And try to redirect people, and that's that's not the way this guy feels like. He just feels like an actor saying the line. To be. I agree. I agree. I definitely feel like his delivery is off compared to the animated series. It kind of to your point. I feel like with the pace of this show, because they're they're doing these eight hour long episodes. Uncle Iroh is kind of the one of the very few characters that slows the pace of the animated series down all the other characters are all kids they're all high energy uh, for the most part especially Aang which the show centered around 
um, and Uncle Iroh is that kind of sweet moment you get to reflect on everything going on and drop of wisdom. And in this show, they're not, I mean, they're, the pace is a little different because they're not doing, what, what is it, 16, 20 episodes? I wish I had that that memory of uh, how many episodes were in the season it's, uh, it's the like animated eight, series. It's like 18 episodes, and they're all like 24 minutes long. So like the yeah. the one for one is uh, three episodes of uh, book one line up, line up pretty well with episode one of the live action. So you don't really have that opportunity to slow down a whole bunch of moments. The the kind of cost that you have to, to pay, I think it's important to do that. If I was in charge of this, I would have made that uh, an essential part. But I think that for the pace of the show, that that's kind of a different approach. And the actor, like you said, doesn't have that emotional delivery that the animated series did have. Um, right. But you can still see... The, the bones of Uncle Iroh's character and the actor that played him. You know, you see him pulling the leash back on Z Prince Zuko and kind of stepping in and trying to show him, you know, you don't don't show your hand to everybody. Don't just lead with your forehead, bite down on your mouthpiece and try to push through everything because you're gonna you're gonna screw yourself over. Um and I think right. episode two kind of did a good job of showing that. Um Episode one was a little hard to gather all those opinions on because uh, it's such a, such a short sample size. But I think over the course of the, the first season, I think we're going to get a better taste of what the show's trying to do with all these characters. So, uh, and I, I'm going to talk about camera angles one more time because I, I'm not an expert by any means. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I feel like... I feel like part of the part of the miss for Iroh is that he's never in episode one at least they cut to him with a camera instead of le letting him walk into the the scene, and I think I th I'm pretty sure in the animated series he's mostly like they're either zooming into him from a distance, or they're panning panning to him from another direction. Or he's walking onto the onto the screen, and like that, it kind of takes the uh, fast-paced action out of the scene. And I think in the live action, if I remember right, every time they show Iroh, they cut directly to him. And I feel like camera work-wise, that's a miss because the like making sure that they kind of slowly or languidly show him on screen is part of his character. I know it's not a it's not him personally, but I feel like them having him on screen show up in a certain way is important. Like you want the you want the chill guy to show up gradually, not just pop up on screen. You know, like for Zuko, I want him to just be in the scene immediately cuz he's an intense guy. I want Aang to be in the scene immediately because he's an intense character. Iroh is more more casual, more laid back. There's no reason to have the camera cut right to his face. And, um, I, I mean, what do you think? I mean, you've seen two episodes. I don't know if, yeah. like, is that the feeling that you got from that? Yeah. So for first episode, it was kind of hard cause you have such a small sample size of right. his character. Um, and, and uncle Iroh is almost comically humble. That's, who he is right you, you know he's he has zero ego and to your point you know about his approach in a scene you know I, i'm so used to seeing you know him kind of wobble into a scene where he's holding his little cup of tea you know just like cradling it like that's the most important thing to him in the world because essentially is, it is it, that's not quite coming across uh in in the live action I do feel like season two kind of has those moments a little bit better than episode one or not season two. Episode two has some better moments that reflect that than episode one, uh, but it still doesn't quite have that same hit. I'm trying right. to reserve my overall opinion through, until I get through season one. Um, and I think that, you know, they're going to have to look back on season one and see where, you know, some of their, their misses were. Um, and some of the feedback they get and shows can adapt and do a better job. You know, like 
will of time that we go over thinks season two was far better than season one. Um, I don't know, in your opinion, how accurate or the little changes that they might have made along the way. Uh, but for me, I know that a show can can adapt. Uh, but yeah, I think that they're kind of missing that that humbleness and com- co- comedy in a way that he brings that, uh, you know, just zero ego. I'm here for my tea. I'm basically just like babysitting my, my great or my nephew, you know, mm-hmm. um, I feel like that's kind of missing. Okay. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I, that's what I'm the most worried about is, you know, the, and I think, I think part of the reason why I'm concerned about it is that if you're going to increase, if you're going to increase the maturity of the characters, if you're going to take the edge off of things like Sokka's uh, sexism, if you're going to take the edge off of uh, Katara's pain from her mother dying, if you're going to take the edge off of if you're going to take the edge off of Aang being childish or Zuko being obsessive, then you need to really, really lean into Iroh being chill, totally, totally relaxed in all situations, reluctant for confrontation. Uh, like they need to really, really lean into that more, not back off or make him flat. Like you need the, that you need so too. do what? You'll you'll get that in episode two. Okay, yeah, I wanna I wanna watch it. I should have I should have watched episode two before we talked because now I feel now I feel uh, lost. But I mean, at least I'm at least I'm thinking about it because that's I really do want to watch it. I just unfortunately there's only one editor for this stream and uh, he's a busy guy. Yeah, you are no doubt. Down. MVP dog Car- carrying this thing um, uh, I, and, I mean your overall sentiment and opinion is valid you're not you're not missing anything you just get a little bit more of what you're missing with that character specifically in episode 2 because it kind of episode 2 there's confrontation with Commander Zhao um, right. and I know you kind of mentioned that Zuko they you know kind of took the edge off of him being obsessive that comes across very clear in episode two. He is, you get a lot more of that Iroh pulling the leash back on Zuko because he's going into the Fire Nation, like port port capital of that area, trying to get information on where Aang went. And Commander Zhao's there and they're trying to, Uncle Iroh's like, you know, don't show your hand yet. You know, like, cut your mouth. Let's handle this in a much better way. Mm. Uh, and even a couple of, uh, moments later in that episode where Zhao figures out what they're there for and goes after Aang, um, you know, and gets there to the island first. Uh, uh, Iroh and Zuko are a bit late to that, and Uncle Iroh kind of points out to Zuko because Zuko's freaking out and obsessing over how he's late and he's going to miss this opportunity. Uh, and Iroh's like, look, look, just because you're first doesn't mean you're going to hit the target. You know, like, Commander Zhao is going straight to the city, but I bet the Avatar is probably not in the city. He, you know, there's a big statue of an Avatar, and where there's one Avatar, there's probably another. You know, and it's like, don't don't narrow your focus on something. Pull back for a second. Take take a moment to think and, and adjust. And I, that was kind of a moment that, you know, I was looking for in the relationship. Okay. Well, so... F- follow up follow up question um uh because i'm you know obviously i need to continue to watch the show i haven't i haven't really dug into it yet but what do you think about um you know i don't know if they're gonna do it or not but it seems to me that they they would have uh, shot episode one and then gone back and looked at it and tried to adjust it i mean assuming all of these people that are producing the show are fans they would feel the same way that we felt and they they would want to go back and make adjustments and try to cre- try to um correct things or at least nudge them back in the right direction does Sokka does Sokka show any signs of increased um uh, I guess sexism is the right word uh towards anybody in episode two or is he pretty much the same 
kind of hard because in episode two he doesn't i don't feel like he has that sentiment of where he thinks that women aren't capable of being strong okay. i think the 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 opinion that i have on it is that i feel like from what i took from episode two is he was trying to show how strong he was he he wasn't as focused on other strength as much as he was on trying to show his own strength and how strong he is and he's capable and he's a fighter there was some moments between him and suki where you know he was trying to show her how badass he was and his little uh tool that he made i don't remember the name of it but he was like right. throwing it at target practice and he was like, yeah, you know, I fight all these like tiger sharks and they're so, they're so dangerous. And I'm, you know, this leader of my community and I'm so strong. And he's like, she's like, okay, well, well show me how this tool that you made works. And he throws it, hits the coconut. And she's like, that's, that's impressive. That's cool. And then she flicks her fan out, floats it, and it slices 10 coconuts in one movement. And he's like, <laughs> all right. And then she, and then after he was like, you know, we're, we're basically we're known for our hand-to-hand -hand combat and so suki's like all right let, let, let's throw down then and she immediately puts him in a chokehold and he gets his feelings hurt and he, and he runs away uh because he gets his butt whooped and then later on in the in the episode they kind of have a little moment where Sokka realizes how i guess effective and lethal they are by watching them train and so he goes in and he starts training with suki and you see her uh, adjust him and he has moments, you know, a little love bird moment between the two. And I, I enjoyed it, uh, but you don't get that old Sokka and the way he kind of would have handled that. It's a little of a different approach. Not bad overall, still on point, um, but just kind of lacking that essence of so, the, the sexism. So they're, they're, Essentially, they they kind of cropped out him uh, being loud about it. Like maybe yes. maybe he feels that way, but he's not. Um, I mean, because him talking like that in the animated series was uh, kind of goofy. You know, the way kids talk to each other. I'm better than you, boy. You know, boys rule, girls drool, kind of thing. Like that's the that's the feeling you get from the cartoon. But you you. You could do that in live action. I don't know if it would hit or not. I, f I feel like going too far over the top would miss. But if you if they're showing like him being, you know, kind of a, you know, like I'm I'm this big alpha dude and I'll protect you kind of thing, uh, you know, and then she basically is like, well, I'm just as capable as you are here. Look, I mean, I'm a better shot than you, and I'll I'll choke you out if I have to. You know, like I, I feel like maybe the message sounds like it's going across. It's just not as, um, not as childish as the cartoon was. I think that's a great way to put it. it you know, I mean, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like when we were little, yeah. uh, you know, it makes me want to watch the little rascals, honestly, the He-Man Woman Raiders <laughs> Club. Yeah, no. And, and today we live in a time where you know that's not acceptable for for you know big corporations to put that on screen uh even though you know it is inherent in kids you know and it's not doesn't have to be a bad thing you know in the in the way that you put pointed out in the little rascals you know boys think they're better than girls and girls think that they're better than boys and they just compete um you know and and even in the show all the way back then you know suki was far better and more skilled in almost every capacity than Sokka. Sokka was just dumb luck that really got him through a lot of situations. And, uh, you know, that's what kind of helped him grow in, in that aspect. And you're not going to get that, I think, with this. You get it in a different way. It's just not verbalized. Right. It's not, so it's not obnoxious. Exactly. Exactly. But I think that this show's taken a much more serious approach. So I think if they would have added that to Sokka's character, it will probably, it probably would have came off a little bit more disingenuous than it does in the animated series. Hmm. Um, but a thing that I noticed that I wanted to talk about is how raw these fight scenes can be. 
I feel like it's definitely made for a more mature audience than the animated series is because like you see these burned corpses and the, the the battle of the southern air temple uh which that battle scene was fire pun intended yeah, yeah. uh i absolutely love how they're doing that yeah they're 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 definitely cranking up the maturity you know when you watch the cartoon for nickelodeon it says fantasy violence which means people can die but not on screen and yeah. the main the main characters aren't usually the ones doing the killing. It's usually the quote unquote bad guy. But uh like you get the you get the Fire Nation basically burn somebody to a crisp on screen within like the first ten minutes of the show. <laughs> and and I like that, you know, that's that's what I wanna see, you know, in in this being different because I'm not I'm not ten years old anymore. Right. Uh you know, I want I wanna I wanna get that childhood essence captured in the show but give me some flares you know i'm 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 an adult you know yeah. i want to see some rawness to it so i like how they sprinkle that in i think if you overdo it it can kind of ruin the show uh, right. because this at the end of the day is a child show um but i like that touch i think that they really knocked that out the park yeah i thought i thought they did a good job um the the combat was good so far from what I've seen, all the bending has been pretty good too. I I really like it. Uh, I really, really like what they do with the avatar state. Like whenever he transitions into it, it is, it like gives me goosebumps and it's not just cause my air conditioner's on. <laughs> yeah, just, just wait till season or episode two, man. There is a wicked scene with him in the avatar state and spoiler alert and i feel bad i i, sh I should i shouldn't have went ahead well hey dog, this this thing is out and it's 10 years old at this point or 15 years old uh but yeah it's it's the same thing that happens in the show uh but just seeing it in a live action is wild uh and and you'll know what i'm talking about when when you see it Okay. I don't want to ruin it for you. Well, I mean, I know the good guy wins at the end. You could say that about most shows. Yeah, I just meant like the I don't I don't want to go into detail about what happens in that avatar state, because if you don't remember it from the animated series, I don't want to ruin it for you. Right. Um, but if that's the point that you were making that you like that, you're going to really enjoy this next episode. OK, cool. Um. I did want to talk about this uh, screenshot that I have um, pulled up right now because I was, I don't remember, you know, I didn't watch the animated show. I haven't watched it in a long time. And Zuko has this on his, on his ship that they're, that they're floating around headed towards the, towards the ice, the, the wolf cove or whatever. They're just out in the ocean. Um, and this lights up when uh, Aang is released. And I was confused. I was like, what the hell is this? And so today when I went back into the animated show, I found this. These are the Avatar, previous Avatar statues from the uh, air, the Southern Air Temple where Aang, um, where Aang goes to visit uh, and sees Gyatso, uh, sees his bones or whatever and he gets mad and transitions to the avatar state and katara is in this in this room and all these statues eyes light up and so i thought that was a cool touch that the fire nation destroyed all these people saw the value of these these statues or zuko did and took them with him like it makes it feels good that they added that detail they didn't have to put that in there that's a that's a totally random like probably doesn't get uh probably doesn't get a lot of screen time for the whole rest of the season uh but it that's such a cool cool thing that they put in there i i agree i was sharing with you i was i was a bit confused as to what those were i thought i'd remember there was some kind of idols or like the past lives of the avatars were in some kind of um, I guess like how you pointed out a statue, but I couldn't quite place my finger on it. I'm glad that you pulled that screenshot from the 
animated series because I was a bit confused on that. Yeah, I had I had no idea. It felt right, but I couldn't figure out why. I had to go back <laughs> into the cartoon and and take a look. But um Yeah, so I'd say I'd say overall episode 1 was great. I kind of wish I had watched episode 2 so that we could talk about it. Uh I just I knew you were going to watch it. I didn't think that um I didn't think that it would matter, but it clearly did. I should have I should have watched it.